Have you ever longed to have a different face, another name, a new life? Well, if you have, remember there are some things you can never leave behind. Lights out. Mr. Carvel. They told me Dr. Peter Cranford was the finest plastic surgeon in all of London. I trust your reputation will reflect itself in the finished work. Turn around, please. I suppose you were puzzled by my request for absolute secrecy, Doctor. Oh, great many of my disfigured patients have a sense of shame about themselves, Mr. Carvel. Society makes certain of that. Strange, your parents made no effort to... I had no parents. I'm what you might call a self-made man. What wealth I have, I fought for. I detest ugliness, Doctor. Yet you wore it like an emblem all these years. I had no money until recently. Hold still, please. Now, just one moment. Mr. Carvel, behold. There are no scars, just two fine lines near the lobes, where the skin graft was clipped back. You have the original photographs, Doctor? Yes. May I see them, please? Uh, certainly. I shall want this destroyed. I am afraid that's impossible. You see, I always keep a duplicate set of photos. It gives me a record of my work. And on rare occasions, the police require them. I insist it be destroyed. I wore that face like a mask of horror for 30 years. I want no reminders. Mr. Carvel, we had an agreement when you came here. I asked you no questions. You paid me the sum of $15,000 and I performed cosmetic surgery. You haven't been particularly pleasant to work with. I've often suspected you could use a little good psychotherapy along with the physical treatment. Now, I must insist on my rights as a physician. This photograph is part of my record. You don't understand, do you, Doctor? Very well, let me tell you. I was in France a few months before I came here. There was a girl. A very beautiful girl. I mistook her kindness for affection. And when she told her lover, he laughed at me. He laughed at me. The shame was his. No, it was mine. It was then I swore to destroy every ugly thing I found in my path, including my own ugliness, Doctor. Now, I want that photograph. Mr. Carvel, I don't believe your motives are as simple as you say. Who are you? Where are you from? Why did you insist on such absolute secrecy? Your name is not listed in the directory. Now, what is it? Are you wanted for some crime? Perhaps I can help you if you trust me. I want that photograph, Doctor. I'm sorry, Mr. Carvel.
Allow me. Thank you. Are you a patient of Dr. Cranford? Yes. Well, you won't... You won't find him in here. He's away for a weekend. I had hoped to be here in time. You're too late. Do I know you? Do I know you? This way, monsieur. Welcome to the house of the silent man. I, Etienne Dubois, assure you of every hospitality. You will find, monsieur, that... Uh, uh, pardon, un moment, s'il vous plaît, pardon. Hello? Hello? Thank you. On convive. My daughter, Hello. On convive, anglais. Bonjour, monsieur. So, I will bring this up. Better know, monsieur? Crane. Franklin Crane. How do you spell this? Let me. You have been here before, Monsieur Crane. You recognize my face? No, and yet something. Perhaps the voice is like one I have known. Oh, yes. An evil man. Well, look at my face. Do I look evil? Au contraire, Monsieur. I am rather handsome. Oui, monsieur. Good. We shall be friends. The south room, monsieur. Comes. I shall want a north room. Oh, but monsieur... You haven't one available? Oh, we have one, and it is available, but it looks over the cliff facing the I'll ocean. I'll take it. Oui, monsieur. Papa? Oui? Monsieur Crane wanting north room. Oui, monsieur. Monsieur? You're very lovely. Merci, monsieur. Are you married? No, monsieur. Engaged? No. Strange. Such a beautiful girl as you. My fiancé was killed, monsieur. I'm sorry. Eh bien, c'est fini. And now, if you'll excuse me, I've traveled a long way. Monsieur? Ah, uh, never mind. Uh, I'll find my way. Oui, monsieur. Good night, monsieur. Bonsoir. Mademoiselle? You're a very attractive man. Something about him. Oh, you imagine. Papa, he asked me if I were married. So? Well, one day you will try to forget about Rene and think about somebody else. I don't know. Good evening. Who are you? What are you doing here? Let us say for the moment that I am your traveling companion. You followed me from London? Much further than that. What do you want? I came to be with you. Why? You see, Mr. Carvel, I am too ugly to face the world. You must know how that feels. You were a patient of Dr. Cranford. I was. Did he... Change you? No, he might have, but you destroyed all hope when you plunged the scalpel in his back. So you know. I know a good many things. What makes you think you leave this room alive? Only my knowledge of you. You are cool, aren't you? I suppose you intend to blackmail me. You have it all down in writing somewhere, haven't you? And if you're destroyed, the letter will be mailed to the police, is that I it? I knew I could trust your disfigured mind to do something like that. And what do you want? What are you doing here? I've already told you, Mr. Carvel, I came to be with you. Being ashamed of myself, I prefer to hide from the world. 
Naturally, I must eat and have companionship. I think it is poetic justice that you nourish and protect me. Take off that mask. Don't do it, Mr. Carvel. I warn you. Don't remove the mask. You won't like what you see. Look, I'll give you money. You can go wherever you want to go. I have you no go place to... to go. How long? How, how long do you intend to stay here? How long? Forever, Mr. Carvel. Forever. <laughs> He has not come down yet? Not yet, Papa. Strange man, that one. Always he likes to keep to himself. Even cleans his own room. Yesterday, I heard him talking to himself. I heard what I thought was another voice in conversation with Monsieur Crane. I made an excuse to enter, but there was no one with him. He seems very nice, Papa. So? Uh, he finds you attractive? Oui, Papa. And you, how do you find him? Well, he's a very handsome man, but when I think of René... But René is dead. He's coming. Ah, bonjour, Etienne. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, Laura. Bonjour, monsieur Crane. You look quite lovely this morning. Merci, monsieur. You have a most attractive daughter, Etienne. Ah, oui, oui, monsieur. I have a necklace in my room. It belonged to my mother. With your permission, I'd like to make a present to your daughter. If monsieur's intentions are those of a serious man... Oh, I assure you, Etienne, they are. Most serious. Most serious. With yourself this morning. I am, I am. I take it the romance is going rather well. You know too much for your own good. This is more than mere romance, though. What makes you think so? She rejected you once. How did you know that? You forget, Mr. Carvel, I too am ugly. And so you swore to have your revenge. You would make her love you, marry you, and then torture her for the rest of her life. Who are you? Who are you? I might be many people, Mr. Carvel. I might be a twisted figment of your own imagination. Or I might even be the spirit of René Philippe. What do you know of that? Nothing, Mr. Carvel. Nothing. <laughs> to us, Francis Carvel, the inseparable devoted companions. <laughs> You like working here, Laura? It's agreeable. Papa is very nice. Well, I should think a beautiful girl like you would be more at home in, say, Paris. Wearing beautiful gowns, eating at the best places. Monsieur makes a joke. No, I'm most serious. If you were my wife, you'd have nothing but the best. She was very flattering. Laura. I'd like you to accept a small gift. Oh, I'm afraid I could Please, not. I, I've already spoken with your father. But, Monsieur Crane... Laura! Don't shut me out. I've fallen in love with you. I want you to marry me. Oh, I realize this is very sudden. Well, you see, I haven't very much more time. I have to go back to England in a week. And I would be very proud if you would join me. I do not know what to say, Monsieur... Don't say anything now. Think it over. And please accept this necklace my mother wore. Merci. Uh, bonsoir. Bonsoir, Etienne. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get back to my room. But, Monsieur Crane. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Monsieur Crane gave me a gift, Papa. Well. He wants to marry me, Papa. And you? I don't know. He's very nice. 
But always, but he is handsome. He has money, he's respectable. Let us see the gift. Mon Dieu! This is a very bad joke. This is no joke, Papa. The cord. It is the cord which strangled René. Oh, you are mad. I know it is, Papa. And I know it frightened me about Monsieur Crane. Oh, you speak nonsense. Papa, it is he. I swear it is he. He? Who? Monsieur Crane is the ugly one. You cannot mean Carmel. Yes. But this one is handsome. A gentleman. The other was a beast. Papa, it is he. I know it is he. The voice, even the initials FC are the same. I cannot believe it. Wait here. We will see about this. Papa, be careful. You gave her the necklace? Yes. Does she know you murdered for it? She knows nothing. She's going to marry me. So I can't have you around anymore. You're going to murder her soul. I don't know who you are. I don't even know whether you exist to anyone except to me. But if you're not out of here by tonight, I'm going to kill you. Do you really think you can destroy me? I'm not afraid of you anymore. I warn you, Carvel. Take off that mask. Quick, get behind the drapes. Yes, what is it? I will speak with you, Monsieur Crane. Well, I... I was just about to turn in. Perhaps later we can talk. No, Monsieur. Very well. What is it about? This. I never saw it. You presented it to my daughter this evening. I... I saw her open the box with my own eyes. But why should I give her... Her lover was found with a rope such as this wrapped about his throat, monsieur. Look, I assure you I had nothing to do with this. I gave her a necklace, I... There's been some mistake. I must apologize, of course. Perhaps the police would be interested in this matter. Believe me, Etienne, I know nothing about this. This is some ghastly joke. Joke? Look, give me some time. I need some time to figure out how this ghastly thing happened. You did it. Oh, did you do it yourself? You can't confuse me anymore. Perhaps it was you. Perhaps instead of placing the necklace in the case, you accidentally enclosed the cord. The same cord, Mr. Carvel, that you strangled René Philippe. You know everything, don't you? I know everything you know. I know that one evening a year ago, René Philippe sat in this room and laughed at you when you told him you loved Lord Dubois. I know you were very angry and ashamed of your ugliness. You tore a length of cord from the curtain at that window. And that very same night, René Philippe's body was found on the rocks below with a cord around his throat. <laughs> <laughs> I warn you, Carvel. <laughs> you have my face. <laughs> my whole face. You death. <laughs> 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 Who is it? Who's there? No! It can't be. I'm going out of my mind. I just killed you. I felt your body. You were dead. Get away. Get away. Do you not recognize your own ugliness, Francis Carvel? Do you not see in me the monster you tried to destroy within yourself? Francis Carvel, I am the horror in your own black soul. <laughs> Monsieur Crane! 
He must have fallen from the window. He's dead, Baba. We, oui. what a pity. Such a handsome man. What is it, Papa? No, no. Do not look. Go quickly, fetch the police. What is Go, it? Go quickly. 